This is the Building with Polygons lesson for 3D animation in Maya. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to differentiate the basic components of polygonal surfaces, use primitive objects as the basis for more complex polygonal models, understand the difference between moving objects in the scene and moving your point of view in the scene, um, select the faces, edges, and vertices of polygonal message, meshes, uh, you, can, you will learn how to move and rotate extruded polygons using the um, polygonal transform manipulator. You learn how to split vertices and subdivide polygonal faces. And finally, how to smooth polygons to make the model appear less faceted. Now, this is a rehash and uh, continuation of. Um, unit 3 where you're going to just kind of review a lot of the things that you will have already learned in unit 3 but also um, uh, enable us to work with polygons a little more so probably the most common type of models that you'll make for most people for most animators <coughs> So, I want to open the scene file helicopter.ma, and this is just for reference. So there's a reference layer on here that we can see kind of what we're going to make. So, that'll be helpful as we're working. Uh, let's create a polygon cube using create polygon primitives, sorry, cube option box. And I am going to go to um, turn off interactive creation if I haven't already. Actually, I should have done that first. But at any rate, it is off. I'm going to reset settings. And we're going to make it a width of 4, height of 5, and a depth of 9. And we will click Create. And that just gives us our starting point. Uh, the process of extruding a face creates a surface attached to the edges where the face was extruded from. Um, so we're going to do a lot of extruding to create this, which is pretty normal. It's pretty much a lot of the polygon method. Um, And I think, you know what, the tutorial models the whole thing, but I'm going to do, it's symmetrical, so that's not really optimal. So I'm going to change this from the text a little bit. It's going to, we're going to end up with the same result, but I'm going to change it with the text a little bit. Oh, and look at that. My, um, my soft select turned itself on. You can tell by that yellow halo around the selection double click that and turn off soft selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these two vertices and I'm going to use the snap to grid and just move them to the center. And then if you want to, let's go to F8 to go back to object mode and then let's go to face mode just select that interface and delete it. Okay, so because this is going to be like an open shell kind of a thing. Okay, so I want to cut this face along the fins here. Um, Uh, 
that's a okay that's a future step that's I'm getting ahead of myself here okay so let's start with this and these settings might end up being a little bit different so we're gonna start with the face in the back that's kinda coming um, coming back into the tail fin here so let's go ahead and do an extrude control E or it's right here in the polygon metal modeling shelf or I think it's under edit mesh extrude okay and there's our manipulators for the extrude tool and this I'm gonna pretty much just do this visually um, instead of numerically so I can move you know we have the luxury of having this template here so why not so I can move these extrusions to where I want them and you can see where it created new geometry at the point of extrusion so that's what I was talking about when I said the process of extruding a face creates a surface attached to the edges where the face will be extracted from. You will see a manipulator hander that handle that has rotation, scale, and move incorporated into one manipulator handle. Click and drag on the blue arrow to pull it outward. Um, and then you can scale it with the scale handles. Now one thing I, I want you to be careful about is I'm doing this in halves so if I move those vertices that are if I move those vertices that are along um, x0 I need to snap those back before I merge it into one full mesh again so um, we'll do that at the end so let's move that out and just kind of move it into place here takes a little bit of scaling and a little bit of rotating so and if you scale it along the x-axis it's going to move these vertices off of x0 so so again, we'll just have to come back and move all those vertices back to X0 at the end. That'll be a really quick, simple thing to do. Okay, so make it just a tiny bit more exacting. It doesn't matter really if it's not totally exact, but whatever. And let's go ahead and do it do another extrusion you can do that with the G key that means again and that just invokes whatever tool you used last so there we go I'm gonna pull that out And just try to position this square roughly where it appears on the template. Don't worry about getting it exact. And G to extrude again. thicker than I intended to. I'm going to undo that. Okay. And I think I need to size that down a little bit. Should be about half the size of the fuselage in width. So this is probably not exactly on X0, but again, we are going to fix that at the end. Okay, so that's that's more like what I'm looking for. I'm doing half and using the symmetry to just mirror over to the other half at the end. Okay, so G to extrude again. 
F to frame it up. And just kind of tumble and dolly around to give yourself an idea of where things stand. G to extrude again, and I'm just going to go right through the fins here, all the way almost to the tail fin here. You can see where the next, next polygon edge is on the template. No, of course it's not this easy when you're really modeling your own stuff. You have to figure out where the edge flow is going to be do not have the luxury of having a template to follow when you're making your own original objects. But with time and experience and practice and some trial and error, you will eventually learn. And let's do G to extrude again. Shoot, sorry. G to extrude again, and I'm going to once again put this in the position shown on the template. Should be taking up about half of, of the width give or take. Doesn't have to be exact. Now, if we mirror this with these polygons on the inside here, we'll have these extraneous polygons inside the model, uh, which may or may not cause an, a visual problem, but it does, uh, it is inefficient and it is a bad model. So I'm going to just go through and just delete all these on the inside. So that gets mirrored over and then sealed up. The center gets um, gets merged together, so it'll it'll be a sealed mesh. Okay, so now I'm gonna select the top. I can go ahead and extrude that. A lot of extrusions, so very common polygon modeling technique. Select a face, extrude it maybe a few times. Select another face, extrude it, select another face, extrude it, and you start to have your object starts to take shape. did that a little bit. Just going to pull it back a tab. So, and you can do a vertex manipulation as well. That works for some of this stuff. That's pretty good there. Okay. Back to faces now. And again, we've got this face that's going to get it's going to create a face inside the object when it gets mirrored, so we're going to delete that face. That's going to happen every time we extrude um, with a polygon that includes the center of the model. So when we extrude, for example, these fins from the edges, that will not happen. So G to use the last tool again, which is extrude. And 
let's call it good. Actually, I probably could have done both of those at the same time and just um, used the uh, uh, used one manipulator for both of those fins. But whatever. Okay. Let's do an extrusion to create the roof. I'm just pressing the G key to activate the same tool again. And I will shape this roof. Sorry, messing it up here. Okay, that's what I'm trying to do. Now, some of this uh, might be better suited for the uh, orthogonal views. Like, I can grab those points and just move them over to create the uh, windshield there. And that works quite well. You can see they're not exactly right on the point. I'm not that concerned about that. So um, let's go back to face mode and delete that inside face to get rid of it. And I'm going to create this um, opening in the intake in the back here. I'm going to do that by extruding. And I am going to size that down in the Y direction and the X direction, and I want that sitting on the center here. Try to make it, I think it went a little too narrow there. There we go, that's a little better. Okay, and then uh, it's got kind of, an, um, kind of a pyramid to it, kind of like a, uh, um, oh, I failed geometry, what the heck. One of these things, rhombus, I don't know, whatever it's called. So anyway, the point is, drag that vertex in a little bit. And then let's go back to face mode, and I want just this face selected right here. Uh, there's going to be an extra face again, and it's going to be kind of like a sliver of a face. And I want you to delete that. It should be right about here. So delete that extra face, and then let's go G to extrude again, and this time I'm just going to push it straight back. How far back you want to go is up to you, but um, don't go so far that it comes out the front. So you know, somewhere around there is good. And this top bit here should have a bit of an inward slant. And it looks like right now it has a bit of an outward slant. So I'm going to grab that vertex and just... Actually, I think I just want to move it in the X direction like that. Okay, cool. go back to faces here and again remember face is just a synonym for polygon I've got this internal face here that I don't need on account of the um, mirroring and let's do the wing I think this is the one extrusion where we won't end up with extra internal faces that we need to delete. So I'm going to turn on my multi-cut tool. You can do that right from the shelf if you like. Yeah, it's not quite the exact cut that I wanted, but we can always tweak that. Just going to 
tweak this a little bit so that it matches back up with the template. And I want this to be about even, such that this is about a straight line. And that looks, that looks decent. I'm happy with it. And go back to my uh, face selection and press, uh, if I press G actually, the last tool I used was cut, so I have to actually press extrude again. Um, and if I pull this out, it goes, it goes out perpendicular from the face that it's coming from. And that's actually not what I want. I want it to go straight in the uh, x-axis. So there's this little handle here that you can, you can flip that switch that comes with every extrude. And that will, instead of extruding it relative to where you're starting from, it will extrude it um, according to the world axes. So in this case, that's what I want because I want it to come straight out. Okay, so let's do that and um, I want to bring it in a little bit and squash it down a little bit. actually bring it in quite a bit more, something like that. Okay, and I'm going to do a little rotation here to straighten it out a bit. And I'm going to bring these vert vertices in line so that they're, because they're a little bit wonky right now on mine here, so just so that it's in, in a little bit more of a line. And the surface is a little bit more straight now, because some of these are non-planar polygons right now. So we got to fix that, but I think um, in most cases, a smooth should fix the non-planar polygons, but um, if it doesn't, we can always triangulate the polygons. So, and then I'm going to move this so that it's... Yipes, come on now. Going for a straighter line does not have to be perfectly straight. There we go. So that's that's pretty good. That's fine. So, and then that one does not leave anything that needs to be deleted. So we can just go ahead and click on the face here and do another extrusion which I can use the G key now because that was the last thing I did. And I can just pull this forward so that it's about in line with the template. Probably starting to sound like a broken record here, but this is commonly what it's like when you are po uh, modeling polygons. I'm going to stretch that in a little bit and just move it back to the center here. And then I'm going to flatten this out because it has gotten a little bit sideways. Yours might not have. If yours looks pretty flat, don't worry about it, but you can see where mine is becoming non-planar here. So I'm going to flatten that. I'm going to go to vertices. And I'm going to do this in the top view here. Um, I'm going to snap these vertices to the grid, but again, if I snap them without changing my selection properties, um, they will snap as a group relative to one another. Um, that's, a, that's a review from the uh, first 
polygon move a tutorial, polygon sculpting tutorial. So if you double click your move tool uh, and go to component settings, is it component settings? We want to move snap settings, okay. Turn off retain component spacing. And now we'll turn on snap, and boom, they are all in a line. So now that's a nice flat polygon, it is no longer non planar. And I was going to cut that anyway, which would make it non, which would make it planar, but um, I kind of wanted that to be planar at this point. So let's see if this over just a tiny bit and do another extrude with the G key. And do the same kind of tweaks we've been doing. Size it. Position it. Follow the template. I like my nose a little better than the template, actually. So I'm okay with that. It does kind of curve in a little bit here in a way that the template does not, but I'm pretty okay with that. So um, now I'm going to have, again, a couple of extra faces that need to go right there. Over here, I have a face that needs to be cut because it is an n-gon with five with uh, five points. So. Um, to fix that, you just cut from this point over to its relative same position on the other edge and press enter to do that cut. And that, for whatever reason, pulled it forward a little bit, but I like that. I like that little kind of rounded nose. So, all right. Now what we want to do is mirror this. Did I get everything? Nope, I didn't get the other fins over here yet, so... Let's cut that. Extrude. Oops, I can't use G because I used the cut. All right, there we go. Extrude. And I am going to do a world extrude. I don't want to do it perpendicular to that surface. to my overhead view here and I am going to select vertices. I'm going to actually line these up the way I showed before. Double click on the move tool. Hey, come on! Try not to dock it <laughs> in the wrong place. Move snap settings. We're going to turn off retain co component spacing. I'm going to turn on snap and then nicely lined up. And you know what, I'm going to do that with this other fin as well to get that nicely lined up. That's like what I'm looking for pretty much. So, and I've still got some... No, no, those are fine. Those are good. I thought I... Yeah, I thought I deleted those. Okay, they're good. All right, so let's go to the top view and um, I want to make a selection a 
along the top edge, but I, I want to be careful that I only get the vertices that I want to go to the uh, zero point. So for example, I got this vertice, this vertex in the tail fin, I want to subtract that from my selection. So, and I've got the same right here in the tail fin. The tail fin's really thin, and it's really easy to grab those vertices. We don't want those snapping to the zero point, just the ones in the middle. Right along the middle there is what we want. So I'm going to take a look around and just make sure I think that's the only where the only place where I did that. Yeah, it looks like it is. So make sure that you've just got the middle vertices selected. And I'm going to open up the move tool options and just double check. Retain component spacing is still off. I actually didn't reset it. So I can turn on grid snap with X and move that to X0. We can reset that tool now. And it is now perfectly ready to mirror. So let's go to object mode, mesh, mirror options, and this is going to mirror on the negative X. We're going to combine this with the original, merge border border vertices. Okay, should be good. There you go. And now here's a fun little trick. We'll go ahead and smooth it. Mesh smooth. And holy smokes, that looks an awful lot like a fish. Isn't that fun? So have fun with that, and have fun with your final project. Remember to review the five modeling concepts that will accomplish 90% of any poly modeling project, because that is very, very helpful to know.